Just like that. Chest. Flex your chest. Welcome to the Exercise Science Playlist where my intention is to communicate evidence-based information to you that you can apply or not based on your individual needs. Now this video is a bit different because I'm not going to cite any specific piece of research to you. These are sneaky. However, I am going to use John Meadows as a human vessel of evidence and communication. Oh, they're a lot harder than they look. Basically, I needed to get some Mountain Dog into the channel. His thumbnail game is strong. Raising my eyebrows, sir. That mugshot ain't helping. The out of context John Meadows jokes are way too easy. Making clickable thumbnails is part of YouTube. As long as the information is good, we good. And he has collabs with other noticeable YouTubers also. And so let's start by saying the guy is enhanced. He's open about it. He's a bodybuilder. And so some of you may say, well, how is his information applicable to me if I'm not those things? And that's a valid thought process as when we think about fitness, we need to place ourselves on an individual spectrum in relation to concepts. However, when it comes to this guy, his information is very good when it comes to exercise science, exercise selection and the reasoning behind this. And so there is scope for channels like this, for people who are not bodybuilders to take away useful pieces of information from the videos. And this one, for example, dumbbell exercises for chest growth is one of those. All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here. And we're, we just did a back video for a dumbbell only back workout. Now we're doing a dumbbell only chest workout. And I know what you're thinking about this video. It sounds simple and it is. Fitness does not always have to be windy and complex. Indeed, some of the most powerful videos that can be made are simple ideas communicated in an accurate manner, which can be highly effective and also with variations given. After all, don't forget that change equals adaptation. So there may be some exercises in his video, which you may not be implementing, which you decide that you want to implement. So we're going to start with a floor press. Now, this is one of my favorite exercises, whether you're at home in the gym, whether you have access to a full gym, I don't care. I really, really like floor presses with a barbell, with dumbbells. And so this is interesting, the floor press. It's not common that you hear someone saying that the floor press is one of their favorite exercises. And when we think about this exercise, of course, it has a more limited range of motion than the bench. And when it comes to range of motion, a greater range of motion can allow for more motor unit recruitment. So that would be a benefit of a greater range of motion. However, when it comes to the floor press, this may be a decent option for people who have shoulder issues. And of course, if you don't have a bench at home, but you have dumbbells, it's an option for someone to be able to perform a free weight chest press. The disadvantage is a spider crawling towards your cheek. It's like some kind of weird gym fear factor and all the hairs on the floor that for some reason you can't ever seem to completely vacuum. And so essentially with all exercise selection, there are benefits to exercises, disadvantages. As with everything, you have to analyze it and apply it to your needs. So we're gonna start with a dumbbell floor press. The floor press allows you to get a great contraction. So up and squeeze. Don't want to mess my hair up there. Passive aggressive. Got to get on the yoga mat. And so here are some potential applications for Mountain Dog. First, the concentric contraction. All right. Up and squeeze. Up, squeeze. See the contraction there? Boom. Boom. Right there. Boom. Second, the grip. Now look at the grip I have. I like this kind of not quite fully pronated not neutral. I like this kind of in-between grip. It actually lines up your upper chest fibers, the cl uh, clavicular fibers. Those anterior clavicle fibers, and it can be useful to think about muscle fibers in relation to movement and exercise selection and execution. A lot of the pressing you see me do with barbells, I stop, I don't lock out. This exercise, I actually like to lock out. And so with anything like this, there will always be that comment that, oh, so you're saying that the floor press is better than a standard dumbbell bench press. Not at all. That's not what anyone's saying. That's not what he's saying. We have to understand with exercise selection that there's always going to be variations that may suit certain people at certain times in their training for certain reasons unique to them. Training is variable in nature. And if someone has shoulder issues, but they want a good chest contraction from a free weight press, this may be a useful exercise for them to consider. All these hex presses, smash presses. What Brett's doing is he's actually smashing the dumbbells together. These are, this is another exercise that's great for a chest contraction. You get a lot of good tricep work with this too. And so again, here is a variation and of course change equals adaptation and the very simple adjustment that if you have that position on a press or even for a push up, for example, you're going to incorporate more of the triceps. Brett's doing is he's actually smashing the dumbbells together. Shame on them for not making any Hulk smash jokes. Amateurs. Third exercise. Now, if you watch the back, the back workout the other day with dumbbells, you saw me do 
this fly version where I had my hands together pronated. Very quickly, pronation, supination, and every YouTube fitness vlogger ever. What's up, nation? And I kind of slyly mentioned this works your chest too. So that's what we're going to do. The emphasis is going to be a little different. I'll talk you through it as I do these. It's not really a fly, it's more of a pullover. So again, pronate a grip, dumbbells together. Now, as I come down, I want you to watch my wrist. You see how I rolled my wrist like that? That's going to get your lat stretching, but now I want you to pull up with your chest. Flex your chest. When I had you doing this for back, we stopped right here. For chest, I actually want you to come down a little bit further and squeeze your chest. So roll the wrist a little, stretch your lats. Now pull with your chest real hard, all the way up. A quick break from the action to thank you for watching the last video. Exercise number four is going to be a flat dumbbell fly. Now I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not a real big fan of regular dumbbell flies. I feel like when you're with this neutral grip and you start coming down really low, I feel like there's some shoulder stress there, rotator cuff stress, it doesn't feel good. And so this is really important. When it comes to something like a chest fly, there is that risk reward scale. And I have a specific video where I go into more depth about this. And one issue with the dumbbell chest fly, of course, is that range of motion and the potential stress it has on the muscle groups that John alludes to. And so that's very good critique. Now, when I'm on a machine fly and I'm sitting there, it actually doesn't feel as bad. And so a machine is one option for a fly. You also have cables, which can be an excellent alternative to the dumbbells for a chest fly. But I also like the nuance here of how he explains that if you are using a higher load, even on a machine, how it can have certain issues also. I will say this, I'm normally using the, the, or the uh, manual resistance machines here, which allow you to lighten up at the bottom and go heavier at the top. But I'm not a real big fan of a heavy weight coming way back like this. It may not hurt you right now, but five years from now, 10 years from now, I don't think it'd be good. And so here are John's solutions to these potential problems. So let me know what you think. And it's this thought process, which is really one of the underlying factors in this video. How do we think about exercise selection? What are the variables that go into it? And a chest fly is a very good example. Well, here's the problem. Here's a potential solution. Do I change the equipment? Do I change my range of motion? Specific cues in my execution? These are the types of discussion I want to project to you as part of the reason for making this video. But, but on this one here, the floor stops you from going too deep. The other thing I want to mention before I do these is there's a certain point at the top where you lose tension, so you don't have to bring them together. About right here, you're going to come down, your elbows are going to touch the ground. Like right here, my elbows are touching. See that? And then I'm coming up to about right here. There's no tension from here to here. I can't feel anything changing. Actually, I lose stress off my chest. It actually makes it worse. So here to here. And think about it. How many videos are there on YouTube by these donuts just saying, now we'll go to the chest fly, perform this, without explaining the nuance, without referencing the risk reward. And in many cases, they're follow along tutorials. So it's really good whenever you have a tutorial like this, for example, from Mountain Dog, where he does explain these different factors. But again, fitness is essentially the basics done well. And by done well, I mean consistently and with an ever progressing challenge. And just for reference, he has a range of videos about different fitness issues, which are far more complex than the one that I've chosen. But what I really wanted to project in this video is the philosophy of doing the basics well, the thinking into exercise selection and execution, the variables involved, how we may adjust certain exercises. And in a world where there's so much fitness nonsense with people trying to reinvent the wheel constantly, I feel compelled to share ideas which are basic in nature, but when done well, are can be highly effective. So hope you enjoyed that. Thanks. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the support. I'll see you soon.